How are we finding Wales today? How are we finding Brexit more specifically? Probably every phone. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. It's, it's lovely to be back at this venue after Telford, actually. Because uh, uh, you didn't like Telford. I was born in Telford. Well, that's quite a No, I, just, it's not, I really like Telford. I take it But it's not Wales, is it? No, it's not. Exactly. It's England. Exactly. <laughs> I think it used to be Wales, did it? Kind of way back when. Yeah. You know what? The borders have been moving for years. You know, it's. Uh, you know, it's, it's an ongoing dispute that we have with the English, you know? It's funny how that happens. Through civil war, where else coming from? It starts with it. Right, the Arrow Wars. Paul, you were there first and foremost from the get go with Arrow, of course. Well, it feels like it was the last century at this it, point. It's, that's a while. It, it's, it's a while, what? Because it'd be the eight, eight seasons of that, and Flash is about to start nine, yeah. Legends got seven, I believe it was, and Supergirl was six. It's it's Legends, just, sorry. Is this just still going? No, uh, no. Unfortunately, it was it was it was on the chopping block when the uh, the big merger just happened. So Legends is no more. Are there? Are they all? Are they all? Are they, is pretty much anyone anyone hanging on. It's just the Flash, the Flash, which has been announced that season nine will be the, the last. Uh, Superman and Lois, but yeah. uh, Supergirl that finished, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got, got six. Wow, they gave everyone had a good run. I mean, we had, it was a good run. Oh, a good run. Yeah. Decade? Yeah, yeah. How long were you on it? How, long, how many seasons did you do? Uh, uh, all of them? No, I did seasons one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I was at the end of season six. And then I went off and did another show in Vancouver during the season seven. Popped into a tiny bit of Arrow during that season. And then did a few episodes in season eight uh, of Arrow in the finale sort of season. Oh, in the finale. Because nobody yeah. dies in the Arrowverse, you can always bring them back, right? Like, no, 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 you either, yeah, you're not dead, you either come back uh, on another planet, right? <laughs> As a, I think it was, um, what was her name, the, the woman in, on the island? Um, oh, she came back as a ghost of oh, shadow, hallucination, yeah. shadow, mm. and a twin sister, I think. I think that was the record, three different ways of coming back. Well, as John Constantine, I died and come back as a mushroom. You can't really be that, can you? <laughs> and, yeah, we'll stop that one. And then Sarah Lance, Katie Lotz's character, ate the mushroom and tripped, and I spoke to her. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what happened. That's really what happened. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it got, it got a bit nuts. Like, that's the jumping the shark moment, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Bebo was the giant teddy bear, big buddy. That was fine. It was the mushrooms as a jump in the shark. Yeah, that's, that's the moment. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, what's it like to, to be now? Because obviously you come to these conventions, you're synonymous. Both you guys have all these credits you name, but now you're synonymous to a certain audience with these roles. Is that good or bad? The swing to the roundabouts of that? Well, it's good to have been employed at some stage. <laughs> I mean, so I think essentially it's good, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, no, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's great you know, to have a character that is... Um, so beloved by everyone and to the fact that everybody liked you playing it and didn't, you know, uh, not like you playing it, but also to be a part of that whole thing, that, that what Balanti set up with the Arrowverse, starting with Arrow, and, uh, and now that's coming to an end, and uh, all good things must come to an end, and, and that's that's okay, you know, It's but it was a, a good thing to be a part of, and, and it's lovely when, you know, fans don't recognize me without blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was in LA 2002, and there was, a, you know, was when I first ended up there. And for that sort of first decade, Arrow started 2012. You know, I was involved in a whole bunch of shows, other shows that were already established, coming in as a guest or pilots. And, you know, it's going to be the new Lost and Spielberg, you know, is producing it, or Jason Blum, or, or you know, this, that, this, that, this, that. And you know, like you might do the pilot, you might get you know a season or something, or maybe a season or two. And you know, it's a bit of a crapshoot the whole thing. So suddenly, when you land on one that maybe did have legs, you feel quite privileged and um, fortunate. So uh, yeah, no, it's amazing. It's really, really amazing. I mean, the biggest thing for me is, uh, 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 and, and compared to you guys, you guys did what twenty two, twenty three episodes this year. I mean, I've only ever done. 16 episodes, which was the most I ever did on Legends. And I could just never imagine having to do that many. And then what, you have like a month off and then you're back into work for... Uh, yeah. And it's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of work, right? There's nothing worse than uh, um, an employed actor moaning. Because <laughs> you're like, hang on a minute. Um, but 
Um, it's, yeah, it was pretty much 10 months a year. It was just short of 10 months a year from like July to April. And yeah, so you get a bit like that. But what was we, we, we the seasons just get quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker because you get all the little landmarks that come up through the sea, through, through the time. And, 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 and it just flies by eventually. And then you're sort of doing it in your sleep after a while. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, it does get a bit grueling. It is hard work, especially when you sit around at three o'clock in the morning pouring rain. And, I mean, how Stephen did it, I've got no idea. I mean, that, I think he's a replicant or something. He's not a human being, just in case you thought he was. He's not. Because um, it's impossible what he did. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Isn't it? It's extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. With, with doing shows like that, is it towards the end of each season, or say, towards the end of the production of each season, there's that uncertainty of, is it going to get renewed again? Or, or was Arrow, did it get to a place where, in particular with Arrow, I guess Legends as well later on, where you're always quite comfortable that, yeah, there's... There's legs for another season here. They're definitely going to green like that. I mean, for for me, I was only ever on... Uh, obviously, Constantine was cancelled after one season, which was disappointing. And then I came back here and did a TV show called The Halcyon, which was supposed to be a new Downton Abbey. And that was cancelled after one season. So I thought I, I had the curse of one season thing going on, you know. And then, I, and then when I did Legends, originally I was only going to do two episodes... And then they asked me to do one season, so I did one season. And I was only ever doing one season of Legends. I just kept on coming back uh, uh, each season. So for me, it was like, okay, this is my season of Legends, and oh, they won't be back. Oh, okay. That's quite nice, actually, isn't it? Just sort of going along like that. Yeah. Because ordinarily, it was, you know, it was the, uh, at the beginning of a, when you do a pilot for a show, you sign, you sign a seven year contract. Yes. And I just, and when I first got to my lab, I was like, a seven year contract? I was signing a seven year contract, did say? And then my manager sat me down and he said, look, the chances of the pilot getting the pilot, that's, that's pretty minuscule. The beginning of first season is pretty tiny. Second season, blah, blah, blah. And then if you get seven seasons, then you won't have to work for quite a long time after that. So don't really mind about it. It happens. Um, and so, um, and of course, as I said, a bunch of the shows that I did didn't get picked up for long, you know, for long years. So, Arrow, was interesting. I tell you what was funny actually. I think it was twenty four. A show that I did a hundred years ago. It was one of the first shows to kill off regulars. Oh yeah, yeah. it was. It, it was. It did this thing. We, you know, you don't get your five or six regular actors, the stars, or whatever. And it was one of the first shows to kill off a regular. Like, what? The president's dead, you know? And it set the pre- precedent for that. And. In the first season, remember when Colin Donald got killed, Mer- Tommy Merlin, you know, the, 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 the what was it? Uh, the son of Malcolm. That's what he turned into that. Didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyway, he got killed in the first season. And everyone went, oh shit, it's going to be one of those shows. Fuck. Oh, that's right. Um, and, and in the second season, it was like, oh, it's going to be. And then it was his mum, it was um, Suzanne, Susanna. And so what happened, you knew around February they were writing the finale episodes, right, that were going to shoot in April with the big chop. And, uh, and I was very friendly with Mark Guggenheim. And at the start of about season three, I would send him an email. I'd be like, hey, Mark, it's February. Um, just wondering, okay, you don't have to tell me who, I don't need to know all the secrets. But is it me this year? And you'd be like, no, no, you're good, buddy. Keep on going. I love you, man. I'm like, oh, great. Season four, do that. Hey, Mark. Yeah. And season five, hey, Mark, it's that email. You're like, oh, no, you're fine. And season six, like, hey, Mark, it's that email. And, it's, and he goes, you know, I'm going to be in Vancouver next week. You want to get coffee? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Don't even bother because I think I know what's coming. And, uh, and that was my moment. <laughs> Yeah, you never know what's around the corner. Never know. Well, we Eva, he touched on there. Our Constantine was was cancelled, criminally cancelled after just one season. But when did you get? Because obviously, before Legends, you come back into Arrow for I think it was two seasons, two episodes in season four oh, on the yeah. island. And yeah, uh, what was that like when you get that call? Did you think that you'd ever come back to that character at that point? Yeah, uh, it was one of those things where normally what happens with network television is they would do thirteen episodes and then. If the show, if they like the show, the show is a success, they'll pick up what they call the back nine, which brings you to like 22 episodes or whatever. And with Constantine, they didn't pick up the back nine, but they didn't cancel the show. So they didn't sit release me from my contract. So I was under contract all the way through to the next upfront, which is May. So, and I got offered a few really nice jobs, which I, they, they wouldn't release me from my contract. Oh, not Game of Thrones. 
No, sorry. I don't. <laughs> but um, and, 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 the, and the funny thing was, is um, uh, uh, by that time, uh, obviously I wanted the show to go, but by that time I was just like, look, just please, just, you know, just, you know, give us the fatal gun wound and let me move on with my life and my career. Um, and I ended up booking uh, a play on Broadway, uh, which I went on to do. And just, if, I think it was three weeks before we were about to start rehearsals, and we got a call saying, hey, look, they'd love you to do an episode of Arrow as Constantine. But the timings clashed. Uh, I was going to be mid-rehearsal or just about to be going on stage with this play. So they had to move, like, episode, their episode four to episode five to accommodate me. I knew nothing about this, by the way. I was just, like, turning up. But I found out that they really had to, like, work it and rejig it so that I could basically fly in, do all my bits and fly out. But for me, I was just like, great, you know, I, I, I love the character. I was like, okay, let's put the trench coat on and, and, and I'll have a laugh. And um, so We did have a laugh. We did. We had a wonderful laugh. Yeah. yeah. So it was good. Yeah. <laughs> so who that bloke with the trench coat? It's Matt Wright. It's Constantine. Oh, he's a nice fellow, isn't he? What's he doing with us? What's he doing with me? What's he doing with, me? What's he doing with there? What's, what's good there? But uh, what, what, what was funny was um, I um, at that moment when the show was cancelled, I thought it was over, and then they asked me an hour, and then I thought, okay, that's done. I went off and did the play. I thought it was over, and then they asked me to do an animated movie, and so I did that, and then I thought it was over, and then they asked me to do an episode of Legends, and I thought, okay, I did that, and then it was over. Oh, sorry, the animated movie. That wasn't it? Yeah, so I've done like I've done like five, four, four, five movies as Constantine. I've done provided the voice for Constantine in the animation world for the last oh, five years. Really? Oh, yeah, so he didn't. He, he wouldn't go away. He did not want to kill the guy. He did not. They did not. No, and uh, so at each moment they kept on pulling me back in, and then eventually after Legends, um, after I did the one episode of Legends that the, uh, they they asked me to come on as a series regular for for one uh, for one season, and that led to four seasons of Legends, one of which being a completely different character. So, yeah. The Mushroom. <laughs> uh, no, that was another character. In my <laughs> No, like a very wide range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can play all sorts of fruits. But, um, <laughs> but I actually, like, um, um, uh, no, I actually uh, played another character called Grim Davis because the rights from Constantine went somewhere else. So we weren't allowed to use him. So I thought I was done with Constantine and they said, hey, just stay on the show and create a character. <laughs> so I did. You must be doing something right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, if you've got any questions ready for these guys, we'll come out in after this one question. So there's, there's mics either side, so get your hands ready to come up. But just for you, look back at this, the whole shared Arrowverse world. Um, what are the, the favourite memories that jump out? Or just when you look back and go, yeah, that was a good day in the office. Uh, scratching my back with a peacock feather on Arrow. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I heard the answer, but I didn't, and I thought, what the hell was the question? <laughs> it was that question you thought. Just the favourite memories. Oh, oh, scratch. Is that your favourite memory? Yeah, well, 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 well no, but well, I, I didn't actually really know what was going on. But John, John Badham, who was um, a wonderful director, he directed um, a bunch of movies that we, we loved when we were growing up. And I, I know that you would love them when we were growing up. Um, oh, John, Bad John Badham. John Badham. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, John, John Badass Badham is like, like the, the OG kind of. Uh, yeah. What did he do? He did, um, he did like, Saturday Night Fever. He did Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. He was the one that uh, yeah, was trying to the Bee Gees. They kind of washed up, but they might have some disco tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy, who did all that? I worked with him on Constantine. He was directing the episode of Arrow that I was on. And obviously, NBC were the ones that cancelled it. And John Constantine's doing this spell where we stood around and we all shake the shaky and I did the hooba hooba hooba. And, uh, uh, and, and John Badham came up with this big peacock that he went, I said, well, what part of the spell is that? And he was like, why don't you scratch your back with it? And at the time, I didn't really click what was going on, you know. But it was his idea when he did that. Have you clicked since? I have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, okay, you want me to answer that question? Yeah, it's a bit we just move on. Well, it depends if you can top the peacock story, I guess. I, you know, I think, I think you've topped it with the peacock story. What's, what's well, one well. of your fam favorite memories, you know, like just, you know, so um, well, actually, one of my, well, I wouldn't call it my favourite memory, but one of my idiot memories was the first time, the first night we were shooting one of those, 
on the, on the, not the pilot, we've done the pilot, but the, the well, episode two, I suppose. Um, but, but when we were picked up and we were off and running and we were in Vancouver and we were shooting our first big, you know, nighttime dock, dark, you know, arrow, shing, 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 big dramatic scene, big production. And in the script, it, it had Lance, you know, there's the arrow, and then Lance says, bow down. And I was like, why would I tell him to bow down? That's weird. And I went up to the producer, uh, uh, we were getting close to the filming, and I was like, oh, I'm to bow down. And I went up to the I said, listen, why am I telling the Arrow dude to bow down? And he went, what? And he went, what is it? Bow down, you idiot. <laughs> and I was like, oh, bow, yes, the Arrow, the bow and Arrow. That's it. Thank you. I knew that. I knew that. So, uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> newbie um, <laughs> so that was fun. I say, I'll just give you my idiot memory I could give you lots of other fabulous things where I look great but I don't I thought you gave me the idiot memory there we go nice nice bow down <laughs> <laughs> right so we've got some questions some hands in it there's a oh we've got a microphone around there <laughs> hiya uh, Matt I've just got a quick question have you seen the Sandman series recently <laughs> And if you have, what's your opinion on the recasting of John Constantine? Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard that it's absolutely amazing. And I hear that Gemma Coleman is fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing it. That was a very diplomatic answer. That was the, this is what your agent tells you to say. (laughs) Give us your answer. No, that's the truth. I haven't seen it, but I heard it's great. And, you know, that's like, that's like the manager. I didn't see the incident. Yeah. Uh, sorry, mate. Yeah. No, but I, I know that the, the, it was, I think it was the same issue as when, when um, I stopped playing Constantine, that the, the, the rights went somewhere else. And that's why I think they weren't able to use the character of Constantine and had to, you know, uh, fit it to a Joanna Constantine. But um, I feel that she's awesome and she's a wonderful actress. And I just love Neil Gaiman and, uh, and I love those comics, the Sandman comics. So I can't wait to see it, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. That's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. Honestly, it's the truth. It's the truth, ladies and gentlemen. It's the truth. It really is. Yeah. Have you seen it? Is it good? A lot of rubbish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got uh, questions on this side of the room. Oh, there's uh, a chap there, a young gentleman, with a big back a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. There we go. Um, what's the many props that you two kept from the set of your respective shows? Yes. <laughs> what were they? Um, <clears throat> this is being recorded, isn't it? <laughs> I actually have a full Constantine outfit. Yeah, the whole thing, shirt, tie, everything. I have the whole thing, and 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 and, and I, I I scored the full time. I was like, you gotta give me, you gotta give me, just one, you gotta give me a full constitution. Like, okay, but then there was a bit of a pushback on it actually. So I've got that. I've got the flask. I've got the watch. I've got the lighter. I've got like runes from the from the mansion. From the, the oh, I've got yeah, I've got a whole Constantine corner. Yeah, yeah. And I've got two big magic books called Grimoires, which I read when I was studying for, and they're real magic books. <laughs> what, what can I ask? What? Where are those things now? Uh, in my house, in my in my little uh, it is in my little office. Luckily, <laughs> trying in my little office. Yeah. I, got, I remember getting the feeling um, <laughs> 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 naughty boys. <laughs> so naughty. I got the I did the, the, the dressing files. I did the uh, I took they they I don't know how to take it, but it's kind of weird though. You think oh well, you get to take all your stuff and all that. Yeah, it's kind of rare. Yeah. You like don't put that back. It was back in the arc. And the props people are chasing me down. Miss the light on me. Oh no, on the door. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's not just like the course of your bit, but you have to do a little bit of sweet talking. Hmm. But I took I took or was given or whatever the dressing files, big leather jacket. And I put it in the attic and it went mouldy and I had to throw it away. Oh no. Yeah. I hope my, my constantly you know, it's not mouldy. Keep an eye on it. Watch out for the mould. Yeah. To bring it on. <laughs> are we in Mould Avenue, are we? We are, we are in Mould. I thought the top of Mould was yeah. a very good idea. But... Mm. Yeah, this is the Mould Road. Mould the town is about 20 minutes away. It's. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> are we uh, questions over this side of the. Okay. Young lady at the very front there. Big hands. Stop waving pictures of him at him. He'll get carried away with himself. 
<laughs> How many shows have you done together? Um, actually, it was just, just just one, just one. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't very long shooting because bless them, they, their whole uh, schedule got. Uh, you know, red fitted for me to be able to come in and shoot everything and leave. But I do remember having such fun with Paul, and Paul actually gave me some really good advice in, uh, at that time about don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's like, yes, we leave now. Um, thank you, thank you. And, and we, we we had a really really good laugh, and I really enjoyed the the the, the whole process of being on the set. Okay, I'm not. I don't. I'm not wishing to self whatever. I need a bit of dirt. I'll tell you later. Tell me later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really. Uh, yeah. So that was. Yeah, that was that, and it was. It was funny because when he was doing all his magic stuff, I, was, I remember was watching. Like that's that's brave and bold and brilliant. But the, the <laughs> thing is, with John Constantine is he's it's it's a quite hard thing to do because he's such a an a, a, a bold character that when you're coming onto someone else's set mm. and I had to do this on legends as well you have to take the space and I was always afraid that people might think that I'm an puzzle you know because like he's coming on and he's showing his back and he's out of the way but that that was Johnny you know and, and I had to do that on legends and I remember everyone on legends just looking about me going like oh look at this guy walking in thinking he's all this you know but but it was the character so I had to really kind of amp myself up to not be afraid to do that on a yeah. show where these guys have been established and were you know the the, 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 the linchpin of the whole of the whole thing that happened with those shows so it did take a lot of courage because they were very gracious with me and understanding and, and that really helped Paul in particular actually was. I don't know whether it's because we're both, both British and he sympathised on me being Welsh, but um, yeah, <laughs> but um, but he did. He made me feel really comfortable, and it's one of those things where when I was, you know, the, the lead actor on Constantine, is to take care and make, making sure that the guest stars are, are, are feel welcome because it's very hard walking into a scenario where everyone has already got their rhythm and especially if you're playing a character that is so bold I mean that's difficult you know so um, so there's nothing worse than walking onto a set as a guest or a recurrent or whatever and the, the main actor's got his his or her head up their arms yeah yeah. it's like mate it's not a competition we're just trying to feel comfortable to do the best we can for the show mm. and so yeah and you recognise that so when you're in that position of course with anybody's camera you go Make everyone feel comfortable, then you get the best work out of everybody. Yeah. Um, any other questions this side of the room? Or the chap there with a the beard and a hat and the glasses? But it's a good look. <laughs> <laughs> what about your hair? Okay, so, uh, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good look. So, HBO Max is starting a new uh, Constantine show. Could we see you? Matt Ryan return as uh, Constantine, do you reckon? Um, I, I, I do know that they, um, I think J.J. Abrams is producing a, a, a Justice League and a, and a Constantine thing, but um, I don't think that it's something that they'd be looking at me at. Uh, I think they, they, they're looking to go in another direction, but, but I, I don't know any of these things. We're always the last to know as actors, you know. I think that when one job ends, you kind of, uh, you, you move on to the next thing and you, you, you look for the next piece of work or the next piece of Hollywood, where one door closes and another closes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, um, no, I don't think, I think they're going in a completely different direction with the character. But the good thing is this, right, is I, I played Constantine after one season, 13 episodes, I thought it was done. Seven years later. It's amazing. And the, all the animated movies. And, like, I kind of feel like it was a good run, you know. And, and, and I became such a big fan of his. I've read every single comic there was. And I feel like I'm excited now to see the Sandman and to see Gemma do it and whoever else is going to play it to see what they're going to do it. And I can watch it as a fan. And I'm, and I'm kind of excited about that, you know? And you want to never say never in this, in this business, ever, you know? Like maybe when I'm 70 and they do like the crossover 1 million and 52 or this crisis on multiple universes, you know, I'll come back with, you know, my Zimmer frame as an old John Constantine as the original Constantine. <laughs> Um, so the hands on this side of the room it's there in the back oh there right there hold on uh, this is a question for Matt sorry Paul <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so 
How does Constantine compare to your character on Criminal Minds, Mick? Because they're both they're both sort of known as like the hot British guy, I think. <laughs> oh, um, oh, I, I, I did. I've never thought of about them in the, in the in the same room. Although I think you know John would probably have a good time with Mick in the same room if he was in the room. But uh, I, I, no, I've never thought of, of about the, the similarities between those. I think you know one is a, an ex-SAS soldier and a sniper someone who is very precise in what he does and, uh, uh, and John Constantine is, is uh, you know, synchronicity is his, is his most wonderful gift. He always finds his way out of something, always maneuvers around something, you know, and ends up killing one of his best friends in the meantime and saving the world. And, and I just think that the, the two fundamental differences of those, that they're, they're, they're worlds, worlds apart, I think. But uh, interesting question. Never thought about those two people in the, in the same sentence. <laughs> yeah, there's another question here. Just I can see there's a chap there with the lights with a hand up. Yeah, there we go. Finally, we'll get there. <laughs> So, who are your favourite actors to work with on Legends and Arrow? Oh. <laughs> Nick Zeno. I love Nick Zeno. Nick Zeno is like one of my most human, uh, human, one of my most favourite human beings in the world. I just why? Because he makes everybody around him feel that they can be the best person that they can be, and he. He gives you the space. He he's gracious in in the work that he does. He has a laugh about the work that he does badly. <laughs> no, but he's he's just a, he's just a, he's just a, a, a wonderful spiritual guy. You know, when you're locked in a show for for, for as long as uh, you, you you know you are, then you know you find your people. I've got to say, all of the legends were absolutely wonderful. Adam working with Adam, I could hardly work with Adam because he, I would just be literally looking off. My eye line would always be off because I could not look him in the eye because I just start cracking up, you know. Um, but each one of the legends that was what was so great about what the show became. Everyone was so different. I mean, so different individually as well as characters, you know, and, and, and the way that they pair you off, it was almost like, oh, I'm with this person now. Oh, I need a bit of them, you know, in life generally. But um, but no, I, I especially uh, became very fan of, of Nick Zano just because of the way he was on set, the way he uh, was with the crew, the way he was with people, the wonderful human being that he is. And, uh, and he just made me laugh as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it a favourite actor? Uh, you, yeah. Actor. yeah. <laughs> um, um, well, there's actors, there's the actor bit of the person, and then there's the person himself. Yeah, yeah. So I blurred that, didn't I? Yeah. So it's uh, what? I blurred that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, yeah. So when you know, there'll be the people you get up with, and then there'll be the people you like acting with, and sometimes you know, acting very accordingly. Um, and as long as, um, I mean, of course, it was Stephen and Katie, and I always had a good time working with Rick as well. That was always a good fun. But the main thing with acting is, I mean, sure, we don't hang around by a cup of tea or whatever. That's great. But um, with acting, it's, it's about listening to each other. And, and, and it's really boring when you're working with an actor who's not actually listening. They're just trying to say the lines that they thought would sound good if they like, rehearsed them last night in their bedroom or something. And that's how things get really boring really quickly. And and what I enjoy most is when you're working with an actor who's just genuinely listening. And it's a bit like playing tennis, because I'm no good at tennis, but if you just watch the ball, and if you're playing tennis with somebody that's better, better than you, and you watch the ball, you somehow get the ball back more often because you're just watching the ball. They're better, they're making you better because they're better. You know what I mean? As long as you're watching the ball. And the same thing happens with acting. This person would be way much a better actor, whatever that means. But if you're listening to them, then suddenly you go up to a place, then they're going to go up to a place, and they're going, and then everything's going up and up because it's just a listening, 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 and suddenly the scene's happened, and it goes cut. You go, oh fuck, that was good. <laughs> sorry, I swore again. Sorry, it is. She's still sleeping. Sorry, sorry, man. I'm, I'm appalling. Sorry. Um, but in those moments, you know what I mean? So it, it and, and Katie was great for that. Stephen was great for that, you know, and Rick. And it was just, those are the moments where you go, oh, that, that, was, that was great. And sometimes you forget yourself. You get to the end of the scene and go, oh, I didn't listen. Why didn't I listen? Can we do that again? I'll listen this time. And then it's, 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 it
Yeah. 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 thing, isn't it? It's that thing as well. It's like if you if you if you listen rather than thinking about what you're doing, if you look at that person and put it on them, you look good anyway because you you're giving it back. It's like this exchange, and that's the listening. And if you're thinking about what you're doing for the camera rather than listening to them, you end up doing terrible work. Yeah, exactly. It all plays into itself. And yeah, they, they, as you said, there's nothing worse when you're looking at someone and you can see them thinking about what their line that's going to come. You're just like, do you know? Do you, actually, do you know what I would do sometimes? Uh, more and more in rehearsal. Um, what, I don't think I ever the balls to do it actually in a take. But certainly when you're rehearsing and you can sort of see it's happening. Um, so just do a bogus scene. Hey, so what are you doing here today? Just be an actor. Oh, uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just hanging out here having a chat with a bunch of people. Sir? I'm just hanging out here having a... So I would say, sorry, I would say, fun. excuse me? Yeah. And then they suddenly go, what? And then they're in the room. And then they go, oh, fuck, I was listening. <laughs> yeah. I've done it again. Sorry. Um, it's bad job. But you would say, sorry, what was that? Well, and, and then and they, they come at it even more, yeah. Yeah, and then they suddenly realize, oh, he's listening. And yeah, yeah. it would be a very, it would just be my little way of, of, of saying, uh, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. So, just saying, you know, but it's, it's more common, it's more common than, 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 than not actually. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me answer the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry right. about swimming. I, I'm sorry. It's all right. In Wales, we're allowed three a day. It's fine. Three a day. Well, I've used up. I've been in Wales. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think we've got time for one last question. Oh, got to be the chap in the Wrexham shirt, clearly. Not that I'm biased, sorry. Just wondering how much fun the crisis and crossover episodes were to film, or if they were just like manic and insane and there was just too much going on. Did you ever understand any of those episodes? Well, I, 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 I was lucky. I only did one, but I know that um, uh, they were night, they were a nightmare for all of the all of the productions uh, because we literally you'd be filming ten hours, fifteen hours, thirteen hours on on one set, and then you have to go to another set and and, and film, and you don't know, quite know where you are in the story and all of this stuff. So it was a it was it was a bit of a nightmare when. When I did it logistically and stuff, it was fun to kind of like be on the other shows with people. But uh, for me, you did a bunch of them, didn't you? Yeah, they were just, they're just, they're just awful. In that way, just in, the, in terms of the logistics of it, the production of it, the why am I saying this sort of way? And then they're like, it's because it's a story that happened in Supergirl or Splash. Yeah, yeah, and then you're like, this, I this, don't know what's going on. This, this, this. And then when someone says Easter egg, you go, ah, Easter eggs. Well, I, do, I, I, I do. I do remember one, but you know the one where we, we were Nazis? I don't know which one it was. I, I wasn't that one. You yeah, were the Nazis. Were the Nazis and it was all a bit weird there. But anyway, I called up Mark, the producer, and I said, Mark, this Nazi one, do you want a German accent? Are we really going to be Germans? Doing this a German thing? On Arrow? I don't know. And he went, I uh, see how Steven, because the scene was with Steven, he was, being, he was a Nazi kid. And, uh, and uh, he said, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe speak to Steven, see, see, what, see, what he, see how he feels about it. And I went up to Steven, I went, Steven, what do you mean about this German? He goes, no, I'm not doing German. <laughs> God, we're not doing German. All right, so that's that. So I was just English instead. I thought, I can't do a Lance. <laughs> a Nazi. So I was like, I'll do English then. Anyway, that was a, that was a weird crossover moment. Yeah. They were all a bit strange, though, weren't they? Yeah, they were strange. And it was, it was not that the, you know, the, what they were trying to do, I think, was a wonderful thing. Well, it was amazing. Like, at trying to achieve that on television shows, but the logistics of it, and because the schedules are so packed anyway, and you're shooting the long hours, and, and there's storylines that you're trying to kind of a thread into that you, you have no idea about. So, so they're a little stressful in that way. But I think, actually, um, uh, apropos to what you were talking about earlier, when you're you know, on other people's sets, mm. the strange thing is everybody was on each other's sets all the time. Yeah. So in terms of like the hierarchy, yeah. uh, it's like, my white now, it's let's just get on with it. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Mm. Uh, and with that, that brings our Arrowverse panel to a close. Paul Backlog. Hi, Ryan. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.